Well, it's four years later, and they, they moved Station House, which they did, apparently. They, um, they're still on Lehman Street, but they moved to a bigger, grander building. But, I mean, Whitechapel's Whitechapel, but, you know, they have the phone system. You know, it's the march of technology. And Reed comes back into this, and he gets drawn into this, but with a totally different dynamic, because Drake is now his superior. We find him in charge of Lehman Street, and he's really been kind of working hard to carry on from where Reed had left off, and he's found himself sitting in this huge kind of posh office. So he's in a pretty good place when we start. It doesn't last long. The Bengal Lancers have arrived to pay tribute to the Queen. It's the celebration of the Diamond Jubilee, uh, Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee. We've set up this great encampment at Hyde Park. Drake arrives because there's a body has been found dockside. The second that there was frozen carcasses be brought ashore for warehousing and distribution, that is true. And I shall certainly be bidding for such work. You cannibal croaker! Abel is like uh, many self-employed, if you like, wharfingers who had small boats and sent them out to the main boats that couldn't get into the harbour. I suppose it's a certain uh, light-fingered quality to his work. And as the story unfolds, in fact, this body that we discover has been murdered. And Drake comes to discuss this, to find out more information of um, how this body is connected with my character. Major Haroon was a Bengal lancer. I think it was quite compelling for Drake. He kind of had an affinity with the man and some respect, and was also exploring the start of what it would be like to take on a boy himself. Rose has been trying to get pregnant and can't, and is, is uh, suffering and going through it because of that and desperate. They are um, struggling. They're struggling massively to have a child, which is a big, big um, darkness on Rose's heart because she can't help but think it's her, her fault, her past life, obviously her years of prostitution. She thinks it's, she thinks she's the, the bad one and it's her fault. So that's a big, a big sadness for her. Beginning of season four, Jackson is sort of a, a, a shady, advocate for Susan's freedom uh, so he's he's in an interesting position where he has to outwardly seem like he's been carrying on his usual way of being but secretly he's he's, um, he's just been obsessed with with freeing Susan uh, and he's trying to do it the right way this time so he's been saving his money he hasn't been drinking he hasn't been carousing um, just a real nine to fiver Susan, at the start of season four, is in prison. Uh, she's been in prison for three years, um, and she's awaiting the gallows. Um, but I think more importantly, character-wise, she has become a mother. She's given birth to um, a little boy, Connor, um, who's fundamentally changed her. Jackson refuses to accept the fact that Long Susan will, will die and he comes up with a plan whereby she's going to escape the gallows. This plan goes awry. There's no means of paying off the prison warden, the prison doctor, who have agreed to help them with their plan to escape. So she goes through a moment where she's completely lost. It's a mess. All the characters this season have become irreversibly entwined. They have to pick and choose.